Let's do computer exercise 5. Use the panel data for this exercise. The data for the year 1980 and year 1990 include rental prices and other variables for college towns. The idea is to see whether a stronger presence of students affects rental rates. The unobserved effects model is as follows. We will estimate the equation by pooled OLS in part 1. We use the regress command in Stata to obtain the pooled OLS estimates. The estimated equation is as follows. The estimate on the 1990 dummy variable is 0 0.262. It suggests an increase in the rental price over time. Holding other variables constant, the rental price in 1990 was 26.2% higher than that in 1980. The estimate on the student population percentage is 0 0.005. It implies that if the student population increases by 14 percentage points, which is about one standard duration increase, the rental price will increase by 7%. The effect is statistically different from zero at the 1% level. In part 2, we will answer whether the standard errors in part 1 are valid. If the city-specific unobserved factors are in the fixed effect AI, then the composite error term will have a serial correlation. The standard errors are not valid as a result. We applied the first differencing method to the panel data in part 3. We find that the first differenced variables are already in the dataset. We can check the variables using the browse command. Now we use the first differenced variables to run the ORS. The results are listed in the table, along with the pooled OLS estimates. The relative size of the student population significantly affects rental prices. If the student population increases by one standard deviation, 14 percentage points, the rental prices will increase by 15.7%, holding other factors constant and accounting for the city fixed effects. That is more than double the estimate from the pooled OLS. The first difference estimates are more consistent than the pooled OLS estimates because the unobserved city fixed effects could correlate with the student population in that city. In the last part, we obtained the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors for the first difference equation in part 3. Does this change your conclusions? We use the variance-covariance matrix option to specify a robust standard error. The coefficient on the student population becomes even more significant with a smaller robust standard error.
Let's do computer exercise six. In part one, we test the hypothesis beta one equals beta two for the model of example thirteen point six. We have three ways to do that. The first method is to use the test command in Stata to do an F test. The second method is to use the Lincom command, meaning linear combination, to do a T test. The third way is to define theta as beta one minus beta two, and write beta one in terms of theta and beta two. We substitute it into the equation and then rearrange the equation. We can do a t test on theta. The results from the above three methods are the same. The t statistic is one point zero seven, and its p value is zero point two eight eight. We fail to reject the null hypothesis at the ten percent level against a two sided alternative. It implies no difference between the effects of the two explanatory variables. Part two shows that. The difference equation can be written as the following equation. Since beta one equals beta two, we define delta one as the sum of them and write beta one and beta two in terms of delta one. Substitute them into the equation, and we get the result. In part three, we estimate the equation from part two. Compare the adjusted R squared with that in thirteen point two nine in the test book. Which model would you finally use? The adjusted R squared from the restricted equation in part two is zero point one five nine, whereas the adjusted R squared from equation thirteen point two nine. In the test book is zero point one six one, which is slightly higher. Based on the adjusted R squared, the unrestricted model in the test book is preferred. Let's find answer to computer exercise seven. The data set is for three hundred and sixty six student athletes from a large university. For the fall and spring semesters, because we have two terms of data for each student, an unobserved effects model is appropriate. The primary question of interest is this: Do athletes perform more poorly in school during the semester their sport is in season? In part one, we use pooled ORS to estimate a model with GPA as the dependent variable and ten explanatory variables. Interpret the coefficient on the season variable. Is it statistically significant? The pooled ORS gives an estimate of minus zero point zero two seven. For the coefficient on the season dummy variable, it implies that if their spot is in season, 
the term GPA of the student athletes is 0.027 points lower, holding the other variables in the model fixed. But the difference is not statistically significant at the 10% level. In part 2, we are told that most of the athletes who play their sport only in the fall are football players. Suppose the ability levels of football players differ systematically from those of other athletes. If the ability is not adequately captured by SAT score and high school percentile, explain why the pooled OLS estimators will be biased. The individual specific factors, such as ability, skills, diligence, and personality, are omitted from the model. These factors are determinants of the term GPA, and they also correlate with the dummy variable season because the ability is systematically different between athletes in season and those not. As a result, the pooled ORS model suffer from omitted variable bias. Since we have the panel data, we can apply the first difference method to the unobserved fixed effects model to control for the unobserved individual specific factors. In Part 3, we use the data differenced across the two terms. Which variable drop out now test for an in season effect? The time constant variables will drop out of the model because they will be eliminated in first differencing over time. The time constant variables include SAT, high school percentile, female, white, and black. The coefficient for the spring variable in the first differenced equation becomes the intercept. The estimated first difference equation is as follows. The estimate of the coefficient on the season variable is minus 0 0.065. Its p-value is 0 0.130 against a two-sided alternative and 0 0.065 against a one-sided alternative. It implies that the athlete's term GPA is 0 0.065 points lower on average when they are in season. The in season effect is larger and more statistically significant than in pooled ORS. Even after controlling for the unobserved time constant factors, the model can suffer from the time varying omitted variables bias. Part 4 will consider some potentially important time-varying variables omitted from the analysis. They include the course quality and the teacher's teaching methods. They may be different between the spring and the fall semesters. How many courses the students take are also time-varying. If they do not change by the same amount over time for all individuals, the intercept in the first difference equation cannot capture the time-varying effect. The first difference the model is subject to omitted variable bias as a consequence. Let's solve computer exercise 8. Row 2 includes panel data on House of Representatives elections in 1988 and 1990. 
Only winners from 1988 who were also running in 1990 appeared in the sample. These are the incumbents, an unobserved effect model explaining the share of the incumbents vote in terms of expenditures by both candidates, and the incumbents share of total campaign spending is as follows. The unobserved effect AI. Contains characteristics of the incumbent, such as quality, as well as things about the district that are constant. The incumbent's gender and party are constant over time, so these are subsumed in AI. We are interested in the effect of campaign expenditures on election outcomes. In part one. We difference the given equation across two years and estimate the first difference equation by OLS. Which variables are individually significant at the five percent level against a two-sided alternative? The intercept and.、Uh, Difference in the incumbents' share of total spending are statistically significant at the five percent level. The intercept estimate is for the coefficient on the year dummy, delta zero, in the original model. It implies that the world were two point six percentage points lower in nineteen ninety than in nineteen eighty eight. Beta three had implies that a one percentage point increase in the incumbent's share of total campaign spending will raise the Vote share by 0.16 percentage points, holding both candidates' expenditures fixed, but it seems impossible to do both. In part two, we test for the joint significance of the other two first differenced explanatory variables. The F statistic is 1.51, and its p-value is 0.2236. They are jointly insignificant at any conventional level. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that both are zero. We drop the two insignificant variables and run the simple regression model in Park Street. The estimated first difference equation is as follows. The coefficient implies that a ten percentage point increase in the incumbent's share of total campaign spending will raise the incumbent's vote share by two point two percentage points, holding all the time constant factors fixed. The effect is statistically significant at the one percent level. In the last part, we redo part three. But now we use only the pairs that have repeat challenges. It allows us to also control for the time constant characteristics of the challenges, which would be in the fixed effects AI. The sample size reduces to thirty three. The estimate for the incumbent's share of spending becomes smaller and statistically less significant. Compared to Park Street, thank you very much for solving the computer exercises with me, Susan. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.